which translates into... What is good? This is my first attempt with this new setup. Um, I'm trying to walk you through my one foot workout, my one foot technique, a breakdown. Welcome to my channel. Uh, I might do these live if this works out properly, how I'm trying to with this nice mic, the nice camera, and my uh, my footage right here. So what I want to show you today is I had a really good session uh, right before the virus. Actually, this was my uh, latest session, the last time I was in a gym to jump. That uh, Not the last time I jumped, but one of my greatest one-foot days. Uh, if you want more details on my training, my day-to-day, -day, every single moment of what I do, my ins and outs of my training from day-to-day, -day, uh, like what I think about, how I plan my workouts, what I eat, that's all on my daily podcast. Um, so, that's where you can find all of that. And this one, I wanted to do an in-depth breakdown. I got a lot of uh, questions on my one foot because your boy's getting bouncy off that one foot. That feels really good. This rim was actually, if you look here, I measured it just over. Uh, if you look right there, it's just over uh, nine foot seven. And then the tape measure is three inches. So just over nine foot ten. Um, it looks like it's like right on the line, but it's almost like almost a half. So I counted it as like nine, ten and a half. Um, so. Why was I going to do one foot? This is kind of a sneak peek of what I do on my podcast, which is um, I went to do one foot because I did a max jump day about, I think, two or three days previous. Then after that, I did an upper body day to get freaking shredded. And then after that, um, I was trying to get the blood flow. Uh, I was a little bit of sore from my max effort day, uh, but I wanted to burn some calories, get some upper body movement to get the blood flow through my whole body, and also uh, some one foot technique. I think this was also uh, letting my right leg, my quad tendon rest a little bit. I think this was actually a day off. I can't really remember, but that's why I got to stay tuned for the podcast. So if you want details on my training day in, day out, uh, go to the podcast. If you're watching this video, this is all about one foot technique. So let's get into it. I had a full warm up, shooting around, dribbling, get my heart rate up. I try to do some side to side movements. And then my first couple jumps are kind of baby jumps. So we'll start with this one right here. Already feeling really good. So if you look with this one, um, my hand is already getting really up there. So I'm already grabbing it with my fingers. Like that's a great feeling for me. I hope that came through nicely. Um, by the way, if you have any comments, any questions, leave them below. This is the best place to ask me my questions. Easy for me to respond. Easy for people to see the answers as well. And let me know what other videos you want me to see another breakdown. If you like this format, let me know. Okay. So that was already a great jump. One of my first jumps at the rim. And then this was uh, my, one of my first lobs coming from that angle feels natural and a pretty good jump back rimmed it. I'll play it for you so you can watch it. It's in slow-mo. I didn't mean to do that. But back rim, that's already a great sign. One of my first early jumps. Uh, it's not that I'm jumping high, but my timing and my technique is, is right on point. So the ball's right where it should be. I don't have to reach back for it too much. It's kind of close to the rim, which is all these things you got to look at. And I was a little bit shocked at the end of it too. All right, so we'll play this one. Another toss. Good timing again. What I liked about this one is I caught it with two hands, which I've never really done before. Um, but it felt pretty good. I can see myself really catching and dunking with two hands. I went up with one because I'm kind of reaching. But again, a nice jump felt really natural to go off that one. I'm getting good bounce. I'm not really, um, I'm not really feeling like I'm losing any momentum. I'm really transferring my energy well. So let's watch this one. Sorry. For All right. So this one, I'm going to turn that down a little bit um, if I can. But if you watch here, the ball bounces. Good timing. Good arm swing. Really got up with it. Great finish. Like, I'm right at my peak. Look, I'm pretty much straight up with my other hand, but peaked up really good. Just not coming in not full speed. If you've seen my two-foot jump, I'm not running as fast as I usually do. That arm swing, I'm only swinging back my right arm for some reason. I could really swing back my left arm, but I'm just not used to it when I'm actually running like this. So it's one foot. is a lot of work, a lot of things I'm getting used to. Okay, let's watch the next one. Let me turn this volume down a little bit. All right, actually, I think that volume – nope, that volume is too loud. One second here. All right, let's try that again. So. All right, so as you can see, like that's, that's, this is a perfect example. So the last jump, I noticed that I jumped well, but I didn't have that much speed. So I added some speed, came in a little fast, got a better jump, but took off too close. So my peak, I got a little higher. You can see my wrist. Let me put it a little closer. Got a little bit higher, but 
passing the rim as you see I'm a little bit reaching back from where I felt like my peak was. So I'm learning as I go. That's how I do these sessions, especially with one foot when my focus is carving that technique. Um, so the reason I wanted to bring this up before I, before I smash one, the reason I wanted to do this one foot breakdown, this session specifically instead of my other ones is because one foot's very new to me. So I figured as I'm learning it myself, as I go through these sessions, it's a great uh, explanation, a great insight to how I approach these sessions, which I think is the most valuable thing. Instead of just showing you one foot breakdown, this is how I'm learning. I'm still learning how to do one foot. One foot was my very first dunk on nine, nine. I'm still learning. I've never, this is in this video, you'll see my best one foot dunk yet. Um, not 10 feet, but you'll get the point. Let's see how this one goes. All right. So even better. So that one already clicked a little bit. I'm turning the volume down a little bit more. Um, so that one clicked a little bit more. Very good speed, very good pop, very good timing. So a good height on this one. And then just a, a little bit of a finish. If I just back rimmed it, if I just came a little bit more down with it, I might have had it. But the thing is when you're that high, a lot of people back rim, they say, I always say, just get a little bit higher. Because if I was a little bit higher, I could have easily gone down with it. But since I'm like, I'm going to put it in the camera, since I'm like rim height, it's hard to have enough room to go down. But if you're higher, you can come down on the rim more and have a better angle to finish the dunk. Okay. So now this one, let's see what this is. All right, so I tried off the dribble. What happened with this? My sound. There it is. So I'm trying off the dribble. Not bad, but let's compare it to off the lob. So I don't really have that arm swing. I don't really have that same pop. It looks like I'm really high on that leg. I don't really have any knee bend. I could probably get a little bit of a longer penultimate, um, but I'm happy with the attempt. Pretty good pop, really good timing, really good reach, and reaching my peak at the right time. So I'm happy with that. Okay. So another toss, another, again, the ball was too out in front. I'm not used to that. So it's hard for me to go for the ball forwards like that and then come up. Um, same thing with off two feet. Sometimes when the ball's too out in front, I don't jump up. I'm kind of jumping forwards. If the ball's like back and straight up, I have a really nice jump because I'm going for the ball. So those are cues that I use. I throw the ball up. I go for the ball. This ball is in front of me. And when I'm learning these car carved patterns or I'm trying to carve the patterns to jump better, it's really hard for me to um, carve the right patterns when the ball's not in the right place. So when you're really trying to get your technique right, really focus on the lob and go for the jumps that are going to help you with the right technique. Because in that instance, if I was a really good jumper and I didn't have to think about it kind of like my two foot jumps are now, I could just jump normally every time and the ball's out in front of me, I could do some cool tricks. I could grab it and, and windmill it like this or catch it and bring it back. But when I'm trying to carve those patterns, that ball's actually working against me because I'm trying to, uh, I'm, I'm jumping incorrectly while I'm going for the ball instead of just jumping up. Okay. Measuring the rim. Okay, so what I did here, this is a great example of what I think you should do. So, kind of all over the place, throwing lobs, throw, uh, trying off the bounce, uh, <laughs> trying off the dribble, and now I'm like, you know what, I think I'm not, I don't feel like the energy transfer is going up. I felt like I had so much speed, but I wasn't going up. I had some other jumps that felt better during my warm-ups. I'm like, why am, I, why am I not getting higher when I'm adding more speed? So I'm like, you know what, I'm not transferring that energy upwards. And I can feel that. And I know that's really hard to understand. But after years of jumping, when you have a good jump, and I've had a lot of good jumps, not as much off one foot, but I still feel it. And I know what, it, what to look for is I don't feel that energy transfer coming forwards and transferring upward properly. I feel a lot of energy loss, whether my my body's twisting or something like that. So what I did here is I slowed it down, started close to the rim, didn't focus on speed at all and focus on that pop. And you see it already looks more springy. Like I just, I pop up so much easier. And if you look here, uh, if you look, I get like almost the same height with just two steps, two, three steps. Let me move that down for you, sorry. So with just a couple steps, I get about the same height. So that's something to, uh, to look into, and that's the way I approach these jumps. If I'm not feeling the energy transfer, if I'm, if I'm using speed but I'm not getting higher than my warm-ups, which I should because I'm adding another variable, which is more speed, I need to fix what it is. Eliminate the variable. So one of the variables I eliminated there was the speed and the full approach. Focus on just jumping up, okay? And then this one. Oof, okay. So that one, I, as you see the little woof, what that meant was is that I felt it. I felt that aggressive pop and I got up and I caught it with one and I, I got pretty high on the rim. You can see my, let me zoom in a little bit. I got a, oh, wow. So I caught it, still went up, not the most optimal, but the ball's over the rim and hit my wrist. You can see me kind of hit my wrist on the rim, which I was like, ooh, I got a little bounce bounce there. Okay, so now we're learning, we're learning. Now I'm trying off the dribble, I believe. 
really happy with that. Really felt controlled and felt like I used my jump correctly and got a nice athletic feeling bounce. Good timing again, good height, grab the rim. I never really do that off one. So that was really felt like an elite jump, felt like a really good one for jump. And now another one, I was like, I could easily get this. <laughs> And sometimes it just doesn't click. So what happened here? Let's see what happened here. So just a little bit bad timing. I was still going up and I tried to dunk it forwards, but I just wasn't high enough. So not a bad jump, but just I don't think I got that same pop as the jump before, which just happens. My point is when I try to add that speed, when I try to really push, sometimes I push too hard and I don't have that fluid motion. And there's an optimal speed and there's also a speed that my body can handle. So some, 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 sometimes when I go too fast, I, I don't plant correctly and I, I just put too much emphasis on something instead of everything connecting. So it sounds like a lot of feeling and that's how I interpret my own jumping and that's how my training goes. It's very, I'm not as systematic or saying like my, plant, my foot planted here in this exact spot. It's more of a feel for me, but that's the best way I can explain it and I could feel it in the moment and I could explain it better when I'm watching it on uh, Rewind, which is what I'm doing now. Okay, this is a really cool move. You should probably learn if you ever want to pick up the ball. Hold on, this is not showing you on here. <laughs> let, me let me fix this. All right, so this is the move you really should learn if you want to feel cool. How do I do this? Why is it not playing? So this move right here is something you really want to learn to really expedite your jumping process. If you want to pick up the ball with less effort, <laughs> save your energy for the dunks. All right, so here we go. What's this one? Ooh, okay. <laughs> So let's break down what happened here. Again, super aggressive because I'm like, I feel that bounce. I want to add my speed and attack at 100%. And as you see, my leg just, let me just my leg a little bit. You can kind of see I just pushed way too hard. Didn't, I was like going up before it. It's just way too much for my leg to handle and nothing. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for that. All right. So then I'm like, you know what? I'm losing it. Let me go back. And this is another thing is like two hand rim hangs off one are very tough. So I'm like, I know I can do it because I'm jumping way high enough. If I'm just controlled, I don't have anything to worry about. Nice arm swing, both arms back, still a little awkward goose like, um, but still got up. Look, one hand there, two hand there, simultaneous, very comfortable, swung a lot. It's, it's a good, it's a good calibrating feeling to be able to hang with two hands because you know, I'm like, if I can grab solid with my palms on both hands, that means I can get my one hand even higher if I'm reaching which translates into <laughs> let's go all right let me take off the slow-mo for that all right without slow-mo great toss great timing smashed it my best time my best smash off one foot for sure let's see what happened okay so even though the ball was a little bit behind or like a little bit far from the rim, it kept me upright, which was my problem in the other jumps. Like I mentioned, it wasn't as high as it could be, but I still got a really good swing of my arms. Didn't really use my left one, but I used it a little bit at towards the end. But what I did well was really drive that knee up, really push off my right leg right there into my left leg, go up with it, and just the timing. So I had a little bit of a bent arm, but since I got enough height, Perfect timing with the dunk and the finish, which is one of the hardest things in the dunk. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. All right, so let's just look at that timing one more time. Great takeoff. Caught the ball, brought it up. And as you see, about the same height as the other dunks, but probably more because my arm was bent when I caught it. So I got probably the highest jump ever off one. And then the timing was just impeccable right down. See, I barely got it over the front of the rim, right down through. And a little bit of height. Okay, I loved it. All right. So then I'm like, I should easily be able to get one. one. <laughs> As you can see, I got a little bit too excited. It's hard in the moment. Like watching these videos, I understand that I got excited too, too excited in the moment. But when I'm at it, I'm like, you know what? I just smashed it off the lob. I want to feel nasty and elite off the dribble. So I go for it. And I'm just... I took off fast and hard, but just the timing was just not there, and I didn't get high enough to, I got decent height, but not high enough to put it down. Okay, and then I'm like trying it again. Happy with that one a lot. Um, good drive. Maybe I could have gotten a little bit more of a, of a leg bend when I took off on this left leg right here, but I got good height, good timing again, just not high enough. I think if I just got a little bit higher, I would have smashed it off the dribble, which is pretty fun. It's so consistent off one for me, once I get the, 
I tried to do the same lob that I smashed. Good jump again. Um, just far from the rim. I, I think I just not even jumping at the rim. I wasn't jumping up. I was jumping at the ball. As you see, I'm looking at the ball. So just a terrible. Ball. But I got to show you the misses. So now I'm tr trying to just jump high. Wait, that was a decent one. But again, like a little bit of, of a twist, not getting the most optimal. But that was actually pretty high. Let me see that again. Solid wrist on the rim. Um, if I do the math, wrist at the rim at 9, 10 and a half. My hand's 8 inches. That means I'm at 2 inches higher than that. So that's 6 inches over 10 feet. 6 inches over 10 feet is 126 minus my reach, which is 91. Uh, 126 minus 90, 35 inches. So about a 35 inch jump, which I'm very happy with. Alright, so this jump. Probably my best jump ever. Alright. Alright, so if you look there, maybe that wasn't it. It was one I got hype. I think this is it. Let me take the slow-mo off. And this was probably my best vertical height check. Here we go. Oh, why did it skip like that? Hold on. All right. Here we go. There it is. A little bounce. Okay. So I said a little bounce because as I came down from the air, I felt a little bit of that elite bounce that I feel off two feet where I got a really good jump and I feel like I'm floating. I haven't really felt that off one until this jump right here. And it was just a very excellent jump. And let's see how uh, my, let's see. All right, sorry the angle's not the best. Here we go, there it is, a little bounce. All right, so you can see, let me get the zoom in. Here we go, there it is, a little bounce. That was like the highest. All right, so a little zoom in. Okay, so if we zoom in a little bit, the arm swing was great. My speed was great, and I just look very springy. Great knee drive, really optimal jump, great extension, and my wrist is at the rim, if not a little bit over it. You can see a little bit of the bend, um, and I'm just very happy. And then this fall, I felt like I had some actual bounce. Um, one more time. You can just see the difference. So if you're looking for the best jump of the video, this is probably it. I'm sorry, it's just a straight on angle. It'll be a little bit better if it was from the side, but you can just see the rhythm, how much better that rhythm is on this jump. What's up, boy? Oh, you're good. All right, so then I got a little bit aggressive. Tried to go for a smash just out of control so a big thing with me is control that's about it and i really hope that's helpful um really had my best one foot jumps i've ever had super excited to be doing these breakdowns i really think they're helpful if i should do them live let me know if you have any questions leave them in the comments and i'm excited to bring you more tutorials like this this has been a long time coming and i think i'm going to do this for my dunk vlogs because i think it's the most helpful way instead of just showing you my dunks but let me know what you want to see if you want to just see straight dunks dunk mixes anything you want let me know check out my podcast for day in day out training details and follow my own regiment for free i give away all my work Workouts, all my nutrition on that daily podcast just because as I learn and evolve that's not what's going to be valuable for me that information is shared it's out there it's just I have accumulation experience of what I've done and what's worked so I want to help you as much as I can signing off toodaloo stay safe stay healthy stay active and I'm dunking as soon as those gyms open I'm going to break the freaking rim off and dunk on someone's entire life toodaloo dunk like baby